second service, the presence of the Lord. We got everybody here. Summer time is harder on the pastor. If, if ever there was a time I needed to take roll aids and tongues, it would be in the summertime. When you look out and see a lot of people missing and you know that you don't know where they are. You don't know what's going on. But I'm thankful that you're here. Amen. And I'm thankful that the Word of God says where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst of them. So I'm thankful that you're here, but I'm more thankful that He's here. Because when He's here, anything is possible. Because He's here, healing can happen, salvation, deliverance. Anything that needs to be done in the house of the Lord can happen today. I want to say, before we go any further, uh, we are so thrilled and happy to hear that uh, Ryland, who was baptized a couple of weeks ago, Monday night, that, yeah, we got to thank God for that, but Monday night at junior camp, he was 45 minutes in the altar, and he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for what the Lord is doing in our children. Amen. And, you know, a lot of times we put emphasis on having revival with our, you know, with us, with the adults. But God says, suffer not the little children to come to me. He wants to have a revival in our children. And we're seeing that here. And I'm thankful for what God is doing. You go downstairs uh, during Sunday school before, and there's quite a few children down there. And they're worshiping, and they're listening to the word. And yes, they're eating popsicles, and yes, they're eating cookies or whatever. But you got to keep there. you got to... <laughs> Somebody wants stuff up here, but I, I can't do that. But uh, you got to keep their attention down there. But I'm thankful that we have a Sunday school full of kids and teachers that and, and helpers that sometimes not even down to the Sunday school, but just to connect with our children um, and let them know that we love them. And they're important. They're listen. They're our generation, yes. and we're no longer here. It's those that we're bringing up today, and, and we got to do a good job. We got to do a good job of it. Amen. Amen. I guess I'll get the, the announcements before we get into it. I want us to remember this week and continue to remember um, Sister Rita Bailey, that's Sister Melissa's grandma. Uh, she has been diagnosed just two or three days ago with cervical cancer. And so she's got a long road ahead of her. And uh, <clears throat> let's also remember, continue to remember the Reynolds family, the loss of, of uh, Sister B. Reynolds. And let's remember. Frida Elder, who is Sister Pam and Sister Brenda's mom. And, uh, she needs prayer this morning. And I know there's lots of lots of prayer requests uh, in our lives. And, uh, you know, somebody somebody said something to me the other day, and I completely disagree. They said our prayers didn't work. Well, prayers may not always change the situation that we're praying about. But if you're truly praying, prayer will change you. Prayer will change your heart and prayer will change your attitude. And I think maybe thinking about that, that is why sometimes people just give up praying. Because they don't see their situation change. But if they were really to look on their heart, God is doing something on the inside simply because they're talking to Him. Don't, don't ever stop praying. Amen. So I want to mention also that, uh, of course, Wednesday night, midweek service, 7 p.m. And uh, we had a family trip. Uh, family trip on a Saturday planned in the next couple of weeks to Upper Canada Village. Uh, I am, I've been meaning to do this, but I am pushing that ahead to September the 17th. So it'll be pushed ahead to September 17th. There's a few reasons. One, August is extremely hot at Upper Canada Village. Uh, but that's not necessarily the reason. They are under renovations right now. And so they had no hydro out there in Heaney, and I know it's Upper Canada Village, but the shops and stuff that we would want to go in and look at stuff and have their making stuff, they're closed. So basically all you can do is walk by and look at the buildings. So they should be uh, back mostly by the 17th. So we're just going to move that ahead uh, to the 17th. Also, uh, Sunday, August 21st, we're starting something new. And some of the ladies of the church have approached me and, and I kind of hummed and hawed, but they, they uh, twisted my rubber arm a little bit. And, we're going to try something new, and the 
21st is the first, uh, August 21st is going to be the first time. But we are going to start, if it works out okay, every couple of months, we're going to have a family unity dinner. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to have spiritual unity within the church. We love that. That's where we come in and we're all worshiping together. We're all receiving the word together. We're all being excited together. That's one thing. But it's something entirely different for us as a church family to be in unity, to be together. And, and we have been trying to grow that and we want to continue to grow that because how many know if we're unified, then nothing can tear us down. If we're unified together as a body, the enemy can't, can't come in and try to destroy us. And so we're going to try this uh, this unity dinner and uh, the time is going to be announced uh, but it'll be on the board probably for next week August 21st, something new we're trying so I'm, here's what I'm asking because we're, 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 we're saying it as a unity dinner family unity dinner I want everybody to come if you're not working, please come and be a part of this I want us to grow I want us, listen, our community needs to see a church that is growing Amen. Uh, let me also say, I know I'm taking a moment here, but I'm not preaching today, Brother Josh is, so I'm, uh, i gotta get my, I got to get my words out. <laughs> i got to get some something. <laughs> you can, well, I don't want you to sit down because you're going to be worshiping in just like 30 seconds. I just want to say the last thing and then the worship team is going to come. So remain standing. I just want to say thank you Thank you, thank you so much for those that were involved in, in ushering and parking lot attendance uh, on Friday for the celebration of life for Sister uh, for Sister B. Oh my word, my mind is gone today. Sorry, Sister B. Reynolds. Uh, we had 120 people seated, and there was about probably 150 more here throughout the day. But 120. And we finally got to see what our new parking lot's going to look like full because we had people parking over here. Listen, I am thankful that even in Sister B's death, she brought all those people in and all those prodigals that were here. And I believe the word that was spoken, it doesn't have to be from me, but the word that was spoken even through her eulogy, that God is going to stir something and they're going to bring them into the presence of the Lord and they're going to turn their lives back to God. So let's just thank God for that right now as the worship team comes.
everybody across this house, just lift your hands unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to praise you, Jesus. I just want to lift my hands and sing that I love you. Yes, Jesus, you are all that I need. Hallelujah. I exalt you, Lord. I lift your holy name on high. Hallelujah. There's none like you. There's none like you. There's none like you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, so thankful to be in your house. Thankful, God, to be in your presence, God, today. Thank you, God, for all your wonderful people that are here today, God. I pray, Lord God, that the words, God, you have given me to speak today, God, will be anointed, God, and return to these people, God, as you intended to be today. Lord, let our hearts and minds be open, God, to receive your word today. Let your anointing flow over this place, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You've been standing for a little while, and I do not have an opening scripture. So you can be seated if you wish. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Let me first start off by saying welcome home. Amen. I'm so glad you're here. I don't care if you've been going here for 50 years or if it's only your second service. Welcome home. Right. Home is where, there's a saying that says home is where the heart is, but home is where Jesus is. Right. Amen. That's where I want to find my home. Yeah. Where Jesus is. Praise God. Praise yeah. God. Yesterday was a different kind of day. I mean, if you live in Prince Edward County or Napanee or the surrounding area, you were without hydro for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, about almost, what, 10 hours? No hydro? Almost as bad as a Rogers outage. Right. Both affected me tremendously. And so today, you're going to have to bear with me because I have everything on line paper. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Amen. Uh, I first of all want to give a special thank you to Pastor. He told me not to tell anyone, so I won't, but thank you for what you did yesterday. Uh, I needed that tremendously. Uh, he got me some liquid energy. And... Uh, uh, some call it, I do, uh, the elixir of God. Uh, he got me some of that, and it, it helped me quite a bit. And also, I mean, I, I had my, uh, my scholars with me yesterday. Uh, Brother Don and uh, uh, Brother Steve were here at the church, and they were doing some work, and they done a good job. And, and there was a couple times I had to pick their brain because I couldn't find anything on my phone or on the Internet because there was not, none of that. Uh, and so I had to pick their brain because my mind couldn't figure it out. And uh, so thank you to you guys too. Uh, I was told that I, I, I had to recognize them, so I'm recognizing them first. The Lord knows what we're doing. So if there is a problem and something doesn't sound right, blame it on them. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> thank you, Uncle Steve. <laughs> Almost as good as Uncle Google. <laughs> Amen. I, I am, as always, so happy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And uh, every, it doesn't matter what section or series we're going through in our morning uh, Bible studies on a Sunday. Um, I, 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 I'm going to like this one because I love our message. I love what we preach. I love salvation. And uh, I know it's going to be tremendous. This next, this next, next section that we're in. Amen. Let me let me move on here. I'm rambling. Um, let, let me just say this. Uh, I had another message that I was going to preach for today because, as Pastor mentioned last Sunday, uh, I was supposed to speak last Sunday, and so I was going to use that message today. And um, Wednesday night, God spoke something different to me, and I battled that for a couple of days because I already had a message. And I was going to take an easy way out. I was going to go uh, to, to Brighton and watch the monster trucks or whatever. But uh, instead, God had another plan. And so I know this is for somebody. I don't know who. Um, but he changed what I had. And so this is what I have. I'm really not going to be a long time. That's probably why I'm rambling. 
uh, because line and paper is not the same as a computer, and so my notes are not as many. Everybody say thank you. <laughs> Amen. Uh, listen, we, we live in a, in a real world, and we have real problems, and we have real struggles, and we face things that are sometimes detrimental to our health and, and detrimental to our spiritual health. And we, we face things that will, uh, will just, they'll take us out of reality and they'll put us into a dark room uh, mentally, maybe even spiritually, and we'll just shut the world out because we're just, we're tired of it and we want to quit and we want to we wanna give up and we want to throw in the towel. Uh, but I'm here to preach to you today uh, about that. We're not going to quit. We're not right. going to throw in the towel because yeah. we know of somebody. We know of a Savior. Right. We know of a healer. We know of a God that wants yes. to touch you and to help you and to bring you out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. In, in the world that we are living in, there's uh, everyone is striving to be successful in some form, some way. They are striving to be on top or to be ahead of the game, if you will. Uh, to some, being successful means having or owning your own home, owning one to three vehicles, owning your own business, or being manager or CEO or something of that level. To some, being successful is also having a good amount of money in the bank, and I don't know what that is because I don't have any. <laughs> and there, then there are other people who view success as having a decent or a good vehicle to get you to work with, have a, a full-time job that can pay most of their bills on time, be able to rent a house or an apartment and have loving friends and family and strive to be happy. And that is success to these individuals. And this morning, Sister Debbie, Sister Debbie brought up two different people. And uh, it kind of, it sort of flows into a little bit what I'm talking about. There's, you have people in a way that, that are, they're down in the dumps, they've lost their family, they've lost everything. The only thing they know how to do is to sin. They don't even know how to do the dirty things, and then, but they want to change. Right. But the problem is they try, and they try, and they try without Jesus, yeah. and they fail, and they just quit, and they keep going back to their miserable life. Right. But at the same time, you will have successful people, have everything they've ever dreamed of, right. and they will still have a problem. They'll still right. not be happy. They'll still have pain. Right. They'll still have hurts. They'll still have yeah. struggles and problems, right. and they too will get into themselves a time and a place where they want to just quit and throw in the towel. The world we live in is hard to live in sometimes. But at the same time, it's also what we make it. You, know, you must choose to be happy. You've got to choose to get out of the dumps. You've got to choose that. And though sometimes that itself is not enough, you have to keep pushing that. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be good. Because that's what you need to do. The moment you start letting a little bit of negativity get into your mind, that's the moment that you are not happy. That's the moment that you want to quit. Yeah. Half of that wasn't in my notes. Good word, bro. Good word. <laughs> Amen. Out of these categories of people, no one is wrong and no one is right. Being successful is up to you. And you should not be measured by the world standard or measured by what somebody thinks of you. It's not up to anybody else how you feel. Yeah. It's not up to anybody else what you do with your life. I said all that to say this. You do you. Yeah. Right. Amen? Yeah. You don't have to listen to other people. You don't have to do what everyone else tells you to do or, or tries to manipulate you to do. Because people will do that. Sure. They'll try, try, try to make you believe that this job is a better fit for you. They'll try to make you believe that, listen now, that person is a better fit for you. Or that woman or that man is Come a better on. fit for you. That is not anybody else's choice but your own. Preach it, preacher. Come Praise on. God. If you are not first, or if you are not on top, there are people that will belittle you and they'll try to run you down. And again, those things will make you try to quit. When you try to live up to other people's standards, you will struggle and you'll have a hard time to live up to them. So much so that it'll make you want to quit. So again, just make sure that you do you. Amen? But aside from what other people think or demand or want, we are living in this thing called life. And life can be hard enough, and being a human can be hard enough without all the outside influence and negativity and things that we face. And we face all different kinds of multitudes of hurts and problems and, and different things that life throws at us. 
In our life, there are struggles. In the Bible times, there were struggles. If you don't believe me, go back and read the Bible. Yeah. People struggled all the time. Right. Right. With God, with their family, with their friends, yeah. with the ministers in their lives. They yeah. struggled. I didn't look at him because I'm struggling with him. I just... <laughs> think what you want. I know why you want. <laughs> of course. But the human race is, is prone, if you will, to sickness and disease, financial struggle, relational struggle with your spouse or with your family, spiritual battles. And you'll fight with the will of God and you'll fight to keep the enemy off your backs. And sometimes you'll win and sometimes you will lose. Our family members will pass away and we'll lose a piece of ourselves. We'll hurt for a while. We'll have habits and we'll have good things and we'll have bad things coming into our lives. But I've come to tell you today not to quit. Whatever you are facing, do not Come give on. up. But just keep on, on. keeping on, if you will. Right. Keep fighting your battles. Keep knocking down walls. And Amen. keep breaking the chains in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm going to speak to you on this thought. Don't quit now. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't quit now. Mm. There's never a time to quit. Yeah. There's never a time to right. give up. Hallelujah. Right. I've come to tell you today that through your faith, I'm sorry, through all your pain, uh, through all of your hurt, through all of the struggles and all the letdowns that you will face, I've come to tell you that life goes on. It has to. And that there is life beyond your pain. Right. Let me say that again. Yes. Do not quit. Yes. Do not throw in the towel. Yes. Do not give up because there is life beyond the right. pain right. and the struggles and the sorrows right. that you are facing right. in your life. Yes. Hallelujah. You just need to push through. And you don't have yeah. to do it alone. You've got your church family. Right. And you've got God on right. your side. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He said he never leave you or forsake you. And up to this point in my life, he has never left me Come or on. forsake you. So, so far yeah. I know that is yeah. true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book says that he is your strength in your time of weakness. And the book says that he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Right. Praise God. Yeah. Psalm 138.7. Psalm 138, 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, Amen. anybody say, I've been there. been there. Hallelujah. Thou will revive me. Yeah. You know who the thou is? The thou is Jesus Christ. He yeah. will revive you. Yeah. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand against the wrath of mine enemies. Yeah. He's going to throw them out of the way and push them back. And with his right hand, Woo! he's going to save you. He's going to help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. On your doorstep, God reaches down and says, Uh uh, not today. Right. This one's yeah. mine. Right. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. In Psalm 31, <clears throat> now you don't have the scriptures for this, but because I'm just going through them, but in Psalm 31, you can follow along if you want. David is showing his confidence in God. In verse 1, in thee, O Lord, I put my trust. Yes. Verse 3, you are my rock and my fortress. Yeah. Verse 4, you are my strength. Yeah. Verse 5, you have redeemed me. Verse 6, I put my trust in the Lord. Verse 7, I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy. Verse 19, how great is your goodness. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Verse 21, blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness. Yeah. Amen. Anybody ever had the Lord kind to you? Verse 23, O oh, love the Lord, all of you saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Verse 24, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all of you that hope in the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's David showing his confidence in God. Yes. And I have the same confidence yes. because I know the yes. Master. I know who Jesus yes. is. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I've been many times in my short ministerial life, in my short Christian walk, there's been many times I have wanted to quit. There's been many times I have wanted to throw in the towel, but I have not. Because just when I think I'm at my lowest, yes, God sir. is right there to help me. Yes. He's right there to put a path in front of me, to show me where to go next. He's right there to pick me up out of the mire, and to pray to kind of help me just move on. That's who my God is. off paper more often. <laughs> no matter what you're facing, no matter how hard it gets, just keep going. Child of God, just keep going. 
David had so many ups and downs. He had so many good and bads. He did good in the eyes of the Lord, and he did bad things in the eyes of the Lord. But David understood through it all that God is on his side, that God wants the best for him and will help him in everything that he did. So don't quit now. Same goes for you, child of God. He sees your struggles. He knows your hurts. He knows what you're facing, and he wants to help you. Amen. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to guide you. He wants to feed you. He wants to look after you. And God wants nothing but the best for you. That's right. Hallelujah. You, Psalm 55, 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Yes. Are you burdened with anything? Yes. Are you struggling with anything? Are you facing anything? You got demons knocking on your door? Cast thy burden on the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. The enemy wants to pull you out of where you are. But when you've got God, he's not going to let the enemy take you down those dark pathways as long as you let God help you. Whatever you are going through, whatever you are facing, do not quit. Do not give up. Your strength is coming. Your peace is coming. And your help is on the way. Some of you, I don't know who you are, but you've been praying for a long time. You've been struggling for a long time. And I want you to know that Jesus hurt you. Yeah. I want you to know yeah. that your, your prayers, they're up there. Yeah. I want you to know that your help is coming. Your help is on the way. Just hang on. Jesus is coming to help you. Hallelujah. Just cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. It's not yet time to quit. It's not yet time to give up. John 16, 33, Jesus said, In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. They're saying two things here. One, you will have problems, you will have struggles, but I have overcome them. Right. And so can you because of me. Right. And second, in the world. He emphasized in the world. He didn't just say you're going to have tribulation. Uh -huh. He's saying here. In this place, yes. in this world, yes. you're going to have tribulation. Yes. But because I have overcome the world, you yes. can overcome all that. And someday you're going to be with me in glory land. And you're not going to face these things anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't throw in the towel just yet. Don't stop just now. Jesus has overcome the world for you. Jesus has overcome your problem. Jesus has overcome whatever it is that you are going through right now. Hallelujah. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come unto me. Everybody say, go to God. Go to God. Go to God. Come, unto, come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Well, you're working hard spiritually, you're working hard physically, mentally, whatever the case is, you're going to get tired, you're going to get weary. God's saying, put those tools down and come unto me, I will give you the rest that you need. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. In the NIV it reads this. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our life, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Look, I, I don't know who God is reaching for. But I know that between online and in here, this is for somebody. Yes, sir. For somebody's. Amen. I don't think it's singular. Right. Well, there are people that need to hear this message. There are people that need to know that today is not the day to throw in the towel. Today is not the day to give up and say, I can't do it anymore. Whatever you need today in, in the presence, it's in the presence of the Lord. Whatever you need, you can get today in this house. Whatever strength you need is here for you. Whatever encouragement you need is here for you today. <coughs> there is life 
peace and strength beyond your pain, your weariness, and your weakness. I'll say that just one more time. There is life. Listen, there are people that just, they're tired. They're tired of fighting. And they want to give up. And they want to throw in the towel. But just know there is life. And there is peace. And there is strength beyond the pain that you are facing. Your weariness and your weakness. Child of God, this, this is your day. Yes, this yes. day was created for you. Yes, this yes, is yes. a day that the Lord has made to set you free. Yes. And today we will rejoice and be glad in it today. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. Psalm 40. Right. Verse 1. I have, I have waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined. He turned to me. Yeah. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he turned to me. Heard my cry. God hears you, child of God. He's looking at you today. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a rock and established my goings. And he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you have waited patiently. And for a long time, but today he has heard your cry. And today he will incline to you. He will turn to you. This is your day, child of God. He's going to lift you up out of your darkness and your despair. He's going to pull you out of your pit. He's going to set you on solid ground where you are safe. And he will put a new song in your heart. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you need to cry out. Because that shows your desperation. There's an old saying, and again, I didn't have internet. Was, at the time, I couldn't go back and get it, and I didn't look afterwards. But there's an old saying by a buddy, watch his face, that says something like, uh, for every action, there's an opposite reaction, or equal reaction, something like that. Yeah. Correct me later. Uh, so today is the day of your reaction. Yes. Yes. You have acted. You've acted in pain. You've acted in hurt. You've acted in struggles. And now today you're going to react. And you're going to be set free. And you're yeah. going to have peace. Yeah. And you're going to have strength today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you know why you shouldn't quit? Because there's life beyond your pain. And the flower, the flower still blooms and grows after the storm. Sometimes when it's raining, if you've got some pretty flowers, you'll see that the rain will make that flower just kind of droop over. But when it all dries up and the sun comes out, the flower just perks right back up and is happy. And I believe it's praising God. But the flower blooms and grows after the storm. The flower blooms and grows after the rain. Amen. Listen, Paul and Silas, they were thrown into prison, but they didn't give up. Right. They prayed and they sang praises unto God, and they were released. There was an earthquake, and the doors opened, and every band off everybody was loose in that prison house. Job lived through a literal hell on earth. He lost everything and then some, but he did not give up on God. He, and guess what? He gained back what, some of what he lost. Yeah. He came out on top and he succeeded right. because he didn't quit. Because he, uh, he put his trust in God. Amen. Noah, he faced ridicule and slander, slanderings and unbelief all around him from people he knew. But he knew what he had to do. For decades he built the boat and he trusted God and he trusted the process. Paul's was on purpose. He went through with it. In the end, the floods came. And only him, his family, and two of every creature was spared. While Noah was building this boat, he was preaching to people at the same time. But nobody believed him. Can I tell you, sometimes people don't believe the man of God given the word? Can I tell you, sometimes church people don't believe the preacher given the word? Even though it comes from the word of God? But Noah went through with it. He trusted God. He went through with it. 
and him and his family were spared. Can I say, if you are facing something, go through with it. If you are facing struggles, tribulation, trial, whatever you're going through, keep going through. Because in the end, you're going to be spared. In the end, God's going to show up for you. <coughs> Joseph, we heard about him for the last few weeks, so I don't need to get into details. But Joseph, you know, if he, if he gave up, he wouldn't have gotten back what he got back. He wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have had all these things restored unto him if he just gave up and threw in the towel. Elisha, he wanted the anointing of Elijah. He wanted a double portion. He, he wanted to be just like Elijah. He had to work and he had to fight, but he got the anointing that God had for him. But what if he gave up? Don't quit, child of God. Don't give up. That's right. Listen, that step mm. that you are afraid to take mm. is the one that can is the one step that can be the thing that puts your life on a new course. Yeah. Yeah. That step that you are afraid to take can be the one that sets your life on a powerful new course. Mm. Keep moving. Amen. Come Everybody say he's an on time God. Yes, he is. That's a good song because he is an on-time God. Amen. You may think he's not going to show up in your struggles and your sorrows and your problems. When I tell you, he is going to show up. He is already on his way. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Yes. Don't quit because somebody is praying for you. And don't quit because somebody is still depending on you. Right. Somebody's depending on your testimony. Right. Someone's depending on seeing you coming out on top of the situation that you're facing. Oh. Sometimes yeah. people know your situation and sometimes they don't. Right. Yeah. But either way, sometimes they know that you're facing something by your countenance yes. or by the atmosphere around you. Yeah. And when you come out on top, people see that. Yeah. People need you. Don't quit. Right. Sometimes we have to go through the storm. Sometimes we're going to have to work. And sometimes we're going to have to get wet. But we need to wait on the Lord. We have to be patient. You have to wait sometimes. Yeah, that's true. You have to wait. But there's nothing wrong with waiting. There's nothing wrong with working right. and hoping. Right. Amen. Amen. There are benefits to waiting and not giving up. Let's go to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3 verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being, do I have the right thing here? Yeah, uh, 1 to 8 actually. Uh, the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple and ask alms? And Peter, fastening his eyes on, on him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto him, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee, or give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Verse 8. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Verse 2 says, there's a man who was lame from his mother's womb. From an infant, he was lame. He could not walk. And now I'm not sure how old he is in this portion of scripture or how, or, or how old he was when they first started lay, laying him at the temple. But every day he was there collecting all. So what if on that day he decided not to go? What if on that day he quit going to the temple because he knew that he couldn't do it anymore? He was tired of sitting at the gate, tired of asking money from people. What if he did not go to the temple on that day? He couldn't work, so he collected money by whomever would give it. 
on this day because he didn't quit, on this day because he has a job to do, he received much more than he asked for. Can I tell you, don't quit. You may be just getting little bits of things here and there, but there's going to come a time when God is going to put his hand down in front of you, and he's going to pull you right out and give you exactly what you are looking for. On this day, this man who was lame, paralyzed since birth, received something greater than what he was asking for. On this day, he received something money can't buy or the money could not replace. This day, God showed up. This day, this man received an ultimate healing. This day, a miracle showed up. And for the first time ever, this man received strength in his legs, his ankles, and his feet. And he walked, and he ran, and he leaped yeah. for the first time. Oh, God, don't quit. Don't give up. Amen. Stand with me if you would. I'm, I'm almost, almost done. We read in the book of 2 Kings around verse 5 uh, about a man named Naaman. And he was a great man. And the Bible says he was a man of valor. But he had leprosy. Long story short, Naaman was told by Elisha to go dip in the Jordan River seven times and he would be healed. And Naaman got angry and he refused. He said, are the rivers of Abana and Farpar of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Pause for a second. If God wants to do something for you, yeah. a lot of times it's through a man or a woman of God. And there, if there's a direction or there's something specific that God's asking you to do, don't refuse it. Because yeah. if you refuse it, you're not going to get what you're looking for. That's right. And that might have been your only chance. Yeah. Can I not wash in them instead? Long story short, he did as he was told. Listen, the Jordan River is a filthy river. It's dirty, nasty. Gross. Shouldn't even look at it so bad. That's why he didn't want to do what he was told to do. Yeah. But you know what? He did as a man of God said. Yeah. He went and dipped in that river seven times. I don't know how he dipped. I don't know if he jumped off a diving board or a rock. I don't know what he did. Maybe he did. I don't know. But he did it as he was told. And when he come up out of the water the seventh time, he was made whole. Yeah. Leprosy yeah. was gone. If Naaman quit, if he continued to be selfish, if he decided 100% not to follow through with what the man of God was asking him to do and give up, he would have kept the leprosy and it would have eventually killed him much sooner than later. Whatever you are facing, whatever you are going through, don't give up. Look, just when you think that you couldn't move, you couldn't take another step. Yeah. Just when you think that you can't move forward, yeah. you are already walking. Yeah. I don't know who you are. But you walked in here today. You thought you couldn't go any further. <laughs> but you walked in here today. You moved. You're already moving. Child of God, you walked in here today. You moved today. Why? Because you didn't quit. Yes. Yes. You walked in here today. Why? Because you know that Jesus wants to touch you. You walked in here today. Why? Because you know that God loves you. What's the best for you? You're an emotional. Today is your day. I feel a pulling already. I, I don't do this, but can I ask something? If God is not tugging on your heart, can you come to the altar anyway to make it easier for those that are wanting to come? 
Because I know sometimes we sit back and we wait for other people to move because we're embarrassed and we're scared to go up. <laughs> I'm just asking a couple people to come because then I know the ones that are hurting today, they're going to follow. Hey, God's going to touch them today. God's going to release the pain that they've been going through. God's going to release the hurt that they're facing today.
like he's never done. Amen. You can still come to this altar this morning and lift your hands and God can deliver, save, heal.